Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We're back again here, uh, sitting at the desk. Some people might have noticed this week that I haven't been using my normal set. We do actually have a bevy of news stories, by the way. If you want to skip around, we do have timestamps and all that, so you don't got to hear this little preamble. But, uh, yeah, basically, um, I haven't been feeling well this week. Uh, it's not COVID, so anyone that might be worried that I'm suffering from that, no, uh, there's just been a cold that kind of ravaged my house. My children are dealing with it much better than I am. Uh, but, yeah, I've been kind of very low energy this week. I know you guys see me on live streams and everything, and, and, and I, I pretend that everything's okay. But, whew, it's been, it's, it's been a bit of a rough one. Um, but, uh, whatever, we'll turn a corner eventually when I can finally get some damn sleep. I don't know when I'm going to get it. Being a father of three kids kind of makes it so you don't really get that much sleep but you know what as they say the show must go on and if this is the first time you've ever seen a nintendo prime video hey i would appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel as we push through and get to you guys today's bevy of nintendo news also we do have a giveaway this is like one of the last days you can enter technically you could enter no this is it actually today's the last day you could enter to win a playstation 5 an xbox series x or a nintendo switch oled we will be announcing the winner tomorrow night on live stream you do not need to be there live to win so don't worry if you don't have time to be there you will be emailed and contacted uh just use our gleam.island down in the pin comment or the description to enter and let's get into today's news and we're starting with an interesting thing happening with pokemon violet and scarlet so these are the generation 9 pokemon games arriving later this year late 2022 is the official date they look to be fully open world enter villages from any you know you know, any direction or whatever as they put out on the official website. And we haven't really heard anything about the game since it was announced, which isn't surprising. It wasn't actually announced that long ago, just back in February. Still, it does look like we're going to be hearing something from the game soon. This is because the official YouTube playlist on the Pokemon YouTube channel for Scarlet and Violet has been updated now i'm air quoting updated because it could mean anything but typically this means new videos have been added to that playlist that are currently private hidden scheduled for the future that's usually what it means although you can technically update a playlist by just reorganizing except there's not really much on the playlist to reorganize in the first place which tends to lend credit credence to there's a new trailer a new something existing on that playlist to be shown in the future so uh that's obviously really exciting to get some pokemon scarlet and violet news hopefully soon probably sometime in april i would assume uh maybe it's a, just an april fool's joke which would be really weird since the pokemon company typically doesn't participate that heavily in those jokes but you know what uh, that's also something I wanted to note before we move on is got to be very we leery or weary of all the stories happening in the next uh, you know 48 hours over the weekend. Uh, there's going to be a lot of fake news out there. I'm going to try my best when I make my content tomorrow to avoid as much of it as I can. Um, I don't you know I'm going to tell you guys right now. I personally do not have a joke planned for you guys. Uh, I thought about doing some fake news or some fake this. I don't know. I, I'm probably not going to be doing anything like that because. There's already going to be so much of it running rampant on the internet as is that I'd rather try to sift through the fake and try to find the real, which is going to be extremely hard. So whatever, let's move into our next story. And this one actually deals with Kirby and the Forgotten Land because obviously we want to know how well this game is performing. You know, this, this wonderful game right here that I'm having a blast with. And I got to say the amusement park world. Mwah! Uh, but here's the thing, we now have some data for this game, some sales data out of Japan for launch week, and it actually launched at 380,060 units, taking the number one spot. This is significantly ahead of the 200,000 units that Kirby Star Allies debuted at. And obviously in the sales data, we get an update on Switch sales, and the Switch itself, the ent entirety of Switch, which is the OLED, the base model, and the light, leads the way with 83,800 total units sold, with 49,000 of those units being the Switch OLED model. And what's also interesting is there was about 32,000 and PlayStation 5s that sold as well, giving PlayStation 5 one of its best weeks in sales yet. However, despite that, you know, on a bit of the, hey, if you actually care how well, how much Nintendo is dominating Japan, while well, PlayStation 5 has now crossed 1.2 million in sales, that's still behind the Switch OLED at 1.4 million in sales, and the Switch OLED hasn't been on the market 
like for an entire year's worth that PlayStation 5 was. So, yeah, PlayStation is obviously still not even remotely close to doing as well as Nintendo, but they are gaining momentum, so that's good for them. There are a number of PlayStation titles, including things like Elden Ring, trending in the top 10, so it's no longer this total domination by Nintendo and hasn't been for a few weeks, but competition is good, and that's always going to help push each other forward, and hopefully we see you know Nintendo push back with some of their bigger titles they have coming. We all know that Nintendo Switch Sports is probably going to be a big one. I don't know how big it's going to be in Japan, but it's going to be pretty big worldwide. Next up, this story is, these stories come around often. Nintendo makes an announcement, and then their stock prices go up and down. This is just the way of the world. Sometimes the announcements make the stock prices get super inflated when they shouldn't be. Other time announcements make the stock prices go down when they probably shouldn't be. In this case, in the wake of the Breath of the Wild 2 delay being announced, yeah, oh no, it's coming out in spring of 2023, Nintendo stock prices actually went down 6%, one of the biggest daily dips we have seen in a long time. Now, technically, they were already up 25% year over year, so they're, you know, now they're only up 19% year over year. Actually, I think it's maybe bounced back a, a full percentage point at this point. But the point is that it was an overreaction by investors who said, wait a second, Breath of the Wild 2 is not coming out this year. Sell, 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 because that's that's what leads the the, the, the price dip is some investors overreacting and then selling off their stock. So I, I obviously find this to be really weird when they make these decisions because there's already so many major games coming out for Switch this year that the lack of Breath of the Wild 2 in 2022 shouldn't really slow down momentum given that Xenoblade Chronicles 3, Splatoon 3, you know, obviously we got Pokemon coming out we, we have so many big games coming out nintendo switch sports mario strikers you know bayonetta 3 at some point like there's so many big games coming that i don't really think you know while obviously sales would be a little bit higher with breath of the wild 2 coming out especially software sales uh i don't think switch sales are going to be negatively impacted and wouldn't this give you confidence in 2023 to hold on to your stock maintaining its value heading into next year i don't know Maybe I'm just being crazy. Uh, we could be seeing a lot of, you know, stock drops throughout the year as potentially investors think this is the last peak year of Nintendo Switch. But I guess time will tell. All I know is these panic, you know, trades I always find funny. Uh, a lot of people get into Nintendo and in various stock markets because they're not really looking to hold on long term. They're looking to turn around and make a quick buck. If they bought their stock, you know, I don't know, at the beginning of the year and have enjoyed the 25% bump on their stock prices. Maybe they looked at this as, hey, with this being delayed, it, we're going to predict it's not, the, you know, the trending in the stock's not going to keep going up. So we're just going to, you know, sell out. But hey, it is kind of weird seeing uh, one game being delayed leading to a 6% drop. I, I, I honestly don't get investors at times, but uh, I guess if you're just looking to make a quick buck, maybe, maybe you did. So I guess it worked out. All right, and this last story I'm going to show you guys here is actually kind of a double whammy from Nintendo. So uh, first off, we had a new trailer for Nintendo Switch Sports, and uh, I, I found this to be quite interesting. We're actually going to go ahead here and look at Nintendo of America's official Twitter account. You can see them also talking about part two of Ma Masahiro Sakurai's uh, Smash Bros. Fighter reveal trailer uh, and, and kind of looking back on that. If you're interested in that, I will link to that down in the description as well. Uh, this is the new trailer. It's about five minutes for Nintendo Sw Switch Sports. It's just kind of an overview going over everything we already know about the game. Uh, there's nothing new really unveiled in here, uh, but it, it is fun. It is cool. Nintendo Switch Sports, you know, they're going to start ramping up the advertising for it, uh, but that's not really the big news. The big news is this because they just dropped this out of nowhere um, and what we see here is they dropped three brand new games for Nintendo Switch Online that were completely unannounced. Dig Dug 2, Mappy Land, and Earthworm Jim. Two of those being uh, NES games, one being a SNES game. So they've added new games to the base Nintendo Switch Online package. This is obviously good news. There's nothing negative about adding these games, uh, but it's interesting that this happened in wake of Kit and Krista, formerly of Nintendo of America, now running their own podcast show, critiquing Nintendo. That's right. Kit and Krista, you guys might remember them from Nintendo Minute. They now run their own YouTube channel, their own podcast, and on the, oh, their, one of their more recent episodes, they actually criticized Nintendo uh, for the Nintendo Switch Online service, saying things such as Kit noting, hey, guess what? Um, 
newer gamers, younger gamers, aren't going to care about the NES, the Super Nintendo, might not even care about the N64 or Genesis either. So, hey, adding these games means nothing. Also, you kind of blew your load at launch, launching all your good games and haven't really added good games since. Oh, and Nintendo, why aren't you more transparent about how many games we can expect for what platforms and when we're going to get them every single month? Why is there no transparency? Why can't you tell consumers if you're going to be adding more DLC to the expansion pack moving forward? Is it going to be all games? Is it going to be some games? Is there going to be no more added? Why can't we have that transparency? That mostly came from Kit. And then Krista obviously chiming in that, hey, you know, maybe if they add a GameCube, it could possibly be better. But otherwise, obviously she agrees that you know, their Nintendo Switch Online could be better. Uh, and it's obviously nice seeing former Nintendo employees come out and talk like that. Uh, and then, obviously, it's kind of funny because right after that podcast went up, Nintendo dropped these three games. And I would argue Earthworm Jim 2 is actually a pretty solid addition. But it still doesn't really get around the fact that there was no transparency on these games being announced. Uh, obviously, you know, some of these games, you know, like Mappy Land isn't really that great of a game. I, I did play it back in the day. Uh, Dig Dug 2 is what it is. If you like Dig Dug, you, you'll probably enjoy Dig Dug 2. But I, I, I'm just saying that, you know, I get it. I get the criticisms, uh, but it is nice to see these games announced for those looking forward to it. Uh, I know there were some live streams and stuff happening last night at some channels where they were specifically playing Earthworm Jim 2 uh, because that, that takes back to a lot of people's childhoods. Uh, Dig Dug is, is, is more of my dad's era, but yeah, it, you know, it's whatever. Hey, those are some updates from Nintendo of America's Twitter account. So, anyways, folks, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. Hopefully, going to start feeling a little better here. I feel like today I've, I've maybe turned a corner. I just need to get some more sleep. I think I'm running on two and a half hours of sleep right now. That, by, by the way, this isn't because I couldn't sleep. And eh, kids, you know, the, my boys sleep in the same room. One woke up, woke up the other. Leads to a whole thing. If you're a parent with multiple kids and they sleep in the same room, you, you kind of know how it can go sometimes. So dealing with all of that, but whatever. They felt well enough this morning to, uh, to go off to school. Uh, so that's good for them. They're tur they've turned a big corner on their cold. I'm waiting for me to hit that same corner where I wake up feeling refreshed. Right now, I wake up and feel like a zombie. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll catch you in the next video.